Hey guys, uh, want to apologize. Uh, I told everybody that I would have um, Exorcist Father Vincent Lampert on Tuesday night for an interview. Uh, I did. The interview went phenomenal. I learned so much. It was um, it was really amazing. Um, the thing is, uh, I wanted this to be perfect. <laughs> I uh, in the past I've used Zoom. Uh, because you can uh, go live and uh, you know some interviews I do live some I, I record uh, so it's easier just to have one account with zoom uh, than to have one with zoom and Skype but I remember I did one interview on Skype um, with Michael Voris and uh, you know Michael Voris has been exposed in the devil for a, a very long time but not only that um, he used to be a producer at Fox. He, uh, when he worked at CBS, he was an anchor, won four Emmy awards. So this guy is an expert when it comes to producing uh, videos or TV. And um, if you've seen the video I did with him, it was like watching TV. And if you see, ever see any of Church Milton's videos, they are always perfect. <laughs> I mean, they're on point. Uh, so I said, you know what? We better do this one on Skype. I don't. I want this video to be perfect. I was really looking forward to this video. Unfortunately, when I skyped with Michael, I was in the room right next to my router, and I got. I guess I got a pretty crappy cable system because uh, when uh, I skyped with Father Lampert, I was in a different room and it was pretty far away from the router, and um, I didn't. You know, when I was interviewing him. You usually like with zoom you'll see a lag and you can adjust it and with zoom there's some lag that's why i didn't want to do it but as i was watching you know you i'm looking at father lampard as i'm talking and i'm like totally intrigued so i'm not paying attention to my little video because it's like an inch by an inch in the corner and i really couldn't see it, to be honest but if i did maybe i would have noticed that i was freezing up so his end of it was perfect you know, he, his uh, video was perfect. His audio was perfect. My audio in the beginning was terrible. You could hardly understand me. But then after like three and a half minutes, it went well. But the video lagged so much. And what I mean by that is I would blink and my eyes would stay shut for like 10 minutes. <laughs> so Father Lampart would be telling a funny story where he's, you see him laughing. And on a split screen, you see me with my eyes closed like I'm sleeping. And then... It would show me laugh, and my uh, goofy smile, laughter face would be up there looking ridiculous for like three minutes while he goes into telling me a sad story. And I was like, oh my goodness, this is ridiculous. Uh, you know, G.K. Chesterton said, uh, if something's worth doing, it's worth doing bad. <laughs> and that's kind of always been my, uh, my motto here. You know, just do it. I'm just a blue collar guy. I'm not going to be able to make a Michael Voris video, uh, but... You know, that was just too bad. Even G.K. Chesterton would have probably told me to take it down if he was still alive. <laughs> so, um, but I did learn a lot. And uh, I, I think I asked all the questions. I think it was like 18 or 19 questions that you guys uh, asked me in the comments, emails, personal friends, texting me. I'm pretty sure I got all the questions. And I, I remember everything he said. So I'm going to do a um, a, a, a I'm going to do a video Saturday. I'm going to call it Answers from an Exorcist. And I'll be giving the answers, but I promise you it's what he said. And uh, and also, you know, there was like, it was pretty funny because I, I didn't get the video up till late. Man, I don't know if it was like 9, 9.30, Tuesday night. And I seen a little bit of it and it was like freezing up. I was like, oh man. And my son said, well, it's still processing. It's saying, you know, this is the regular process. And then it's saying HD process. He said, well, maybe, you know, once the HD process starts in the morning, it'll look better. I said, okay, well, leave it up. So we left it up overnight and I got like 600 views and you guys were so kind. I didn't get any dislikes, even though the video was horrible. But I guess you were liking Father Lampart because he was amazing. His answers were really really good answers uh to the questions i had uh it was very informative but you know one guy said hey i like the uh, you know i like the interview but um your audio and your video was so terrible uh i have to uh say i dislike it you know but he didn't hit the dislike button so i actually got like out of 600 views i got 80 
likes and zero dislikes so i just thank you for your kindness <laughs> because i didn't like it i watched it i couldn't even watch it it was so annoying seeing uh seeing my side freeze up so you know my son nick he's the one that helps me with these videos um you know i'm not like real tech savvy and he's a really smart kid i mean um you know he's in graduate school and i don't think he's ever got anything less than an a on anything from elementary high school college graduate school but he's majoring in finance he's not really a tech guy he's just really smart i knew he could figure out skype for me um and he's trying and he's like you know i got an idea dad he says you know after three and a half minutes your audio gets a lot better we'll just take your face out of it and just put your like blue collar catholic uh symbol up there and just have a split screen with uh follow emperor i said that's awesome and he did that and he put it up and uh you know i was working so i really you know i got to look at it for like a minute i was like oh thanks man praise the lord and then my son timmy texted us both in a group text he's like hey after 15 minutes uh the audio goes it's there's no sound so nick pulled it back down a second time and uh he's working on it all day you know i'm working he was off yeah he was off from work but he had you know online courses he had to do and you know at the same time he's trying to fix my video and um you know at the end of the day i text him and i'm like any luck he's like man dad this video just does not want to post i don't understand it and I'm like, man, it sounds like it's possessed. <laughs> and uh, I don't think it was. I think it's just um, for some reason we just uh, we were having technical computer difficulties. But there's good news I want to share with you guys. Um, there was a lot of questions, uh, and uh, I actually asked a couple of my own. But one that I was wondering and I didn't ask them was this what kind of man would become an exorcist? And I found out from speaking with him and I found out from an email after. Um, a humble man, a very humble, God-fearing man who loves the church that Jesus established. That's what I learned. You know, in his book, it's funny, he writes, uh, in his book I recommend um, Exorcism, How to Defeat Satan and His Demons. Uh, in his book he writes that he didn't want to be an exorcist. And the, uh, his bishop appointed him to become an exorcist. And he said, why'd you appoint me? He said, because you didn't want to be one. <laughs> and, uh, and later, and what he meant by that was later on, a young priest had, you know, was intrigued by it and wanted to get into exorcism. So he asked the bishop, hey, can you appoint him? He said, no, it, it worries me if somebody wants to be an exorcist, you know, because they want it for the wrong reasons probably I guess and then he said on the bishop's deathbed uh, he said the bishop was very humble and had a good sense of humor and said uh, sorry sorry I got you into this <laughs> and he said they both had a good laugh together I thought that was pretty cool but not only is he uh, a humble and and just a just a God-fearing man and you can just sense he loves the Lord he knows the Bible so well um, and he's got such spiritual insight. I, I really learned a lot. I mean, I was really intrigued by this interview. And um, I almost, I, I kind of felt bad interrupting him with, I wouldn't I interrupt him, but um, by asking him questions, I just want the conversation to flow. Like I was talking, you know, like we were sitting at the living room table and it was, and then I said, hey, let me get to this question and I have to read. You know, it was the reading part I didn't like. I wish I had the questions memorized is what I'm saying. But... You know, um, another another question I had for him was, um, you know, St. Paul, in his second letter to the Corinthians, he said, um, I, basically, I'm going to paraphrase it, um, the Lord allowed a thorn in my flesh. I asked him three times to remove it, and he said, my grace is sufficient. But before that, he said the thorn in the flesh was a spirit of Satan, a messenger of Satan to buffet him, harass him, torment him. You know, different ver versions say the same. I think the version I read said harass me, but the most popular out there is buffet me or torment me. But um, 
And I said, you know, when I was an evangelical sitting in Protestant churches, I've heard a lot of um, ministers say, you know, the, the thorn in his flesh could have been a physical infirmity. I said, but I'm reading right here, it's saying it's a spirit. Was it a demon? And he agreed, yes, it was a demon. He's, it's pretty clear. Exegesis that it, it, Paul was saying God allows a demon to harass him on a daily basis. And he called that oppression, not possession. You know, he said, you know, the, you don't have to worry. That was another thing. You put our uh, fears at rest. You don't have to worry if you're Christian, you love the Lord, you're reading your Bible, especially if you're a Catholic Christian, taking the Eucharist and going to confession. Uh, you're safe. The devil is not going to be able to possess you. But God allows him to oppress us. And he said something interesting. He said, it's a gift from God. And he said, just look at the scriptures. Paul said that God allowed Satan to torment him to keep him from becoming conceited. So, and he, and he said, and he said, so it helped Paul become a greater saint. And he said, look at Job. God allowed uh, Satan to torment Job and it made Job become a greater saint. And then I, you know, I thought about St. Peter, the same thing. You know, Peter was this cocky, you know, always putting his foot in his mouth guy and Jesus said, you know, I'm going to allow Satan to sift you like wheat. And Peter became the great saint, our first pope. So I thought that was interesting. I never seen it as a gift, <laughs> you know. And um, so, but I have to confess, you know, I, I had a bad day yesterday. And, um, you know, I was feeling defeated, not only because the video, you know, I thought this was going to be an awesome video. And I couldn't get it posted, but you know there was a couple, there's a couple of situations I've been praying about for a very very long time, and um, you know it's not getting better. And I was thinking about that, and I was just feeling defeated. And uh, you know when I got home, I ate dinner, and then I just went for a walk. I like you know some sometimes I just need to walk and talk to the Lord. When I you know sometimes when you sit and you talk, you're like uh, you know Peter and you fall asleep. <laughs> when God asks you to pray. So if I walk, it helps me to pray better. So I went for a little walk. But before I went for the walk, I emailed uh, Father Lamport and I told him the situation. I apologized. I felt bad because, you know, this guy is like a busy guy. I mean, w most priests have a hard time just pastoring one church. He pastors two churches. Um, he has hundreds of people contacting him for exorcisms, for interviews. This guy's been on NBC or CNBC. He's been on a lot of like television shows, YouTube guy. This guy's getting pulled from all, all sides, I'm sure. He's a super busy guy. And he took the time out to talk to me, just a blue collar guy, just a, a regular guy. So uh, I was, you know, I was touched by that, and uh, I felt really bad. Honestly, I, I, I felt really bad that I wasted his time. So, you know, I, you know me, I'm all, <laughs> I always say too much. So I gave him this long email basically saying, I'm sorry, Father, I apologize. Uh, I don't know what happened. That's never happened before. I used Skype, I, I, but apparently I used it in the wrong room. And, um, and then I went for my walk. And as I'm walking, a lot of what Father Vincent said to me was coming back, you know, especially about how it's a gift that God allows us to be tormented. And that's what I felt like I was being tormented yesterday. Thoughts are like, God's not answering your prayers. Uh, things aren't going to get better. Uh, you can't even do a lousy video. What do you even think you're doing on YouTube? Who the heck are you? You know, the devil's an accuser. He'll he'll mess with your head. You know, that's what he does. He attacks your mind. So, uh, I just started laughing. I'm like, thank you, Lord, for this gift. <laughs> you got something planned for me. I don't know what it is, but thank you. And um, and I'm like, you know what? I guess maybe, you know, St. Paul said the spirit was there to keep him from not getting conceited. And St. Peter, Jesus said he sent him a spirit to buff, to uh, to sift him. So he, I think, I know, if I'm not mistaken, was so he didn't get conceited either. And I'm like, you know, YouTube demonetized me months ago <laughs> when I supported Trump. So <laughs> it's not about the money. You know, it's not like I wanted a lot of views for the money. But there was a part of me that was like, man, I'm going to get a lot of views. And I and I, I guess it was, I confess, it was prideful. I wanted a lot of views. And uh, even though I wasn't getting, 
you know, if I wasn't getting money for them, why did I want them? Well, pride. I wanted to be the man. Uh, you know, you got 50,000 views, you got 100,000 views or whatever. And then God reminded me when I did this, I didn't want any views. I was just so excited about Jesus. I was so excited that I found the church that he actually established. And there was no doubt in my mind. And I wanted to tell all my friends why I became Catholic. And my son, Nick, uh, who helps me out, he was literally holding the phone like I'm holding it for like 20 minutes while I just explain to people why so many evangelicals are becoming Catholic. And that's my number one video to this day. And I didn't get paid for it. I didn't, nobody knew me. And I was just happy that people understood. So I laughed and I said, you know, thank you, Lord, for sending that spirit to torment me and keeping me uh, humble, you know. You know, I always joke I once uh, got a medal for being so humble, but they took it away because I wore it. <laughs> but uh, no, you know, I joke like that, but it's real. That's, you know, that's a sin. Uh, you know, I made a video like a month ago, of, you know, the greatest sin, and I talked about pride. But I learned something else about Father Vince, what kind of man would uh, become an exorcist. A very uh, compassionate man, a man full of mercy. Because when I got home and I checked my email, he's like, no worries, Rob. We'll just do another interview. <laughs> I'm like, really? I'm like, in one sentence, this guy just changed my whole day from a bad day to a great day in one sentence. So I want to thank Father Vincent for agreeing to do another interview with me. And I promise you guys... We're going to Skype it, but we're going to do it in the same room. I did it with Michael Voris. And if you look at that video I did with Michael Voris, it was perfect. It was like watching TV. And I even told my son, Nick, I said, what we'll do, we'll Skype Timmy, record it, and then see how it is. So we know, you know, if there's, a, you know, if there's anything wrong, we'll work on it. I will promise you, if something goes wrong with this video, then we know it's the devil possessing the uh, computer. So I don't have a date for that, but... Um, he said in a few weeks. Uh, so in the meantime, uh, I'm going to do that uh, Answers from an Exorcist on Saturday. And I recommend you get his book, Exorcism, uh, How to Defeat Satan and His Demons by Father Vincent Lampert. And uh, stay Catholic. But, you know, there is something we can do. You know, not all of us are called to be exorcists. Very few priests are called. And, um, you know, not all of us have the gift that Michael Voris and Church Militant have to make a wonderful, uh, you know, YouTube site. It looks like a professional television production uh, to expose the devil. But we could fight the devil very easily by going to realestateforlife.org and making sure your money that you're spending on buying and selling a house goes to a pro-life real estate company. So do me a favor, go to realestateforlife.org and ask them about all those professional services they could refer you to. In the meanwhile, stay Catholic.